Okay, folks, we are back, and I uh, just want to say thanks again to Kyle uh, from CheckSwing.com who called in. He kind of ignited this whole topic for me this week about parents who coach their own kids. And you know what? There was a whole lot of back and forth um, on this topic on, on um, his blog, and, and I knew it was going to make for a good show. Listen, nobody questions that coaching your own kid has its set of challenges. We all know that. The real question here is, why does it pose such challenges? But more importantly, how do we best deal with them? And that's what we're going to try to attack today. We, we certainly got some calls and emails lined up, so I'm not going to waste my breath anymore. We're gonna, uh, Our good buddy Steve uh, from Dobbs Ferry is on the line, always has something cool to share with us. Hey, Steve, good morning. You're on Let Them Play, pal. Tony, how are you? I have never been better. Hey, you know, one thing before we get on the topic, so much 202. I'm there often, and actually I will be there the day of the Super Bowl. So How cool will that be? Outstanding. I will be the guy with the uh, loud, obnoxious black and gold face paint with uh, the Steelers jersey that reads Fiorino on the back. I will be very easy to pick out. <laughs> I, will, I will certainly uh, search you out when I'm there. So a couple things. Uh, why is it so challenging? And I wanted to comment on that. Uh, along the uh, lines of what Kyle said, parents who coach their kids, uh, they're always a parent in the eyes of their kid, and I've actually done it before, and I, kn I know nothing about the game in the eyes of my kid. I'm just dad. Everybody else I can try to teach them this to, but I'm just dad when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to coaching. So it's so difficult for the child, I think, to view you as a coach versus a parent. So what he says as far as having maybe an assistant coach, you know, work more with your own child, I think makes a lot of sense. And I, also, from the parent's perspective, I found it difficult. In my six years of coaching, I've thrown a kid out of practice twice. And both times, you can guess who it was. My own kid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, because, you know, you, you try to work that, you know, that line between, you know, you treat them differently than, than you treat the other kids. But if my kid's dogging it and I scream that, hey, are you tired? And he said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not throwing a kid. That's not throwing a kid out of practice. I think that's holding a kid's feet to the fire. That's not bad if a kid is dogging it. And like I said, let's be real. You know, if if someone else was coaching, I guarantee your kid would not have said, "Yeah, I'm tired." But he did say it, and so you get you sent the message. Nothing wrong with that. It's not like you beat the kid. No, that's that's, that's true. But it's, again, it's it's tough from both a kid and a parent's perspective. However, having said that, I wouldn't trade the five <clears> six years of the coaching I've done with my kid, Granny. It's been uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, Listen, I look forward to seeing you in uh, about a, in a week. In a, a week to the day, my friend. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if uh, if the Steelers pull off magic as they tend to do when they get to the Super Bowl, uh, I will. And and by the way, if you're a Packers fan, I will not be a lot of fun to be around that evening. Hey, Steve, as always, great to talk to you, man. Good thoughts. Uh, enjoy your week, and I look forward to I'll bring a couple of books to sign. How's that? <laughs> great. Go Green Bay. You, you <laughs> go get out of here. <laughs> All right. uh, that was our good buddy Steve, and again, he always has uh, an interesting perspective. And uh, by the way, I think it's worth mentioning, um, Steve and I have, you know, he calls the show regularly. He happens to have a very solid baseball background. So you would think, if anything, having a very solid baseball background, his kid might listen to him more. Um, not always the case. In fact, when, when I first started coaching, um, it's amazing how little <clears throat> your own kids care about your own resume and pedigree. I mean, I've, I've played on a national level. Uh, I was a nationally ranked uh, player in college. And yet, you know, the, some, sometimes the simplest thing that you say to your kid um, in that particular area of expertise just falls on deaf ears. And it's just because you're dead. It's not because you don't have a background. It's because, you know, listen, my daughter still challenged me when I say the sun's coming up in the morning. You know, Sophia specifically goes, you know what, Dad, we'll, when the alarm goes off, we'll, uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes, again, it's the easiest things in the world that tend to, uh, that tend to really frustrate you yeah. a, a, as a parent. So we got a couple more calls coming in, but I'm going to go to an email before we do, because I got one in here from, uh, from Terry. Uh, Terry, who says, hey, I've been coaching 23 years. And of those 23 years, I've had the opportunity to coach my boys one time each. The primary reason I coached my kids was because I had the opportunity to do so, and there wasn't anyone available who was as knowledgeable about the game as me, so I decided to do it. Now, I can tell you from experience that it is far tougher to coach your own kid. They have to work twice as hard and also have to produce results to prevent a case of, quote, he's on the team because his dad is the coach syndrome. Now, in a perfect world, parents would sit behind tinted, soundproof glass at the games. Now, there's a great idea. If your kids make the team on their own merit, 
merit, which should be the case, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with coaching them. Life is too short to worry about everybody else. Enjoy the experience while you can. The ones who complain are the ones who never volunteer to do anything anyway. Um, Terry, thanks for the email, and I think that based on how you started your email, uh, your statements make some sense. <clears throat> but let's be clear, it is not always the do-nothing parents who complain. Sometimes the coach, listen, sometimes the coach has his own agenda to, to you know, openly and obviously favor his own kid, and, and the parents may have a very legitimate beef when that is the case. But, uh, you know, definitely want to thank you uh, for, uh, for calling in. Um, uh, for Shay for writing in. We're going to go to, uh, you know what, we're going to get back to some more of your calls. We are, uh, are going to go to Mark. Mark, who is calling in. Hey, Mark, good morning. You're on Let Them Play. How you doing, Coach Tony? Good morning. How's everything? All right. Great to be on. i got to tell you, your show, I love it every week. I listen to it. The blogs are great. Thanks. Always interesting yeah, topics, so continued cool. success. Thank you. So what do you think about this whole uh, notion of coaching your own I, kid? I <clears throat> I coach my kids. I have two kids, uh, and I've been coaching them for a few years. I think Kyle made a good point, a very good point. One of his uh, strategies is when your son or your daughter is just not listening to you or you're not being effective with them, if you got a good assistant coach, tag team with them and, and use your assistant to, uh, to try to convey the message. And uh, uh, that, that's a very good point he brought up, so I like that. It's, it's, it's very valuable. A, it's a never-ending challenge. If you want to be involved with your kids and you know the game, whether it be baseball or basketball, you think you know to a certain level until they get older, I think, uh, you know, it's fantastic if you can be a part of their life and uh, spend time with them and be there for them. But there's a fine line, and, I, and I'm one of those guys that are a little over the top, and I want to see my children uh, you know, obviously do well in sports as well as school. Uh, I, I find myself sometimes being a little harder on them, like most other coaches, <clears throat> or sometimes because you're on stage as a coach now more than ever, and you know parents are watching you, uh, measuring the time and measuring uh, the, the efficiency of your practice. I find myself sometimes going out of my way to be a little harder on my kid to show them that there's no favoritism. Well, I don't know. What do you think, Coach? You know what? I think it's 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 in on one hand it's very good because it's so easy for people to pick on you if you have your own kid on the team. And you know what? I I'll admit it. I, I do the same thing or have done the same thing with my kids. They're usually the first ones to come out of the game. They, you know, they're usually the, you know the first ones to to not play their favorite position or to not you know bat in their favorite uh, spot in the lineup. And that's, sure, as a sure. coach, in a vacuum, you might say, wow, that's really cool. You do have, to, you said the word fine line, and that's a really important part here, because you, you better really darn well make sure that your kid understands why you do it. Because if you, if you don't address that, even if your kid may be all smiles, um, they may be thinking, gee, I, you know, I'm not happy with playing time. Or, you know, why shouldn't I be treated like everybody else? So that's a tough one, you know. But I think if I was going to err, I think you're erring on the right side. And, uh, you know, if, if you have that motivation, you'll find a balance. You know, as, you know, how old are your kids? They're six and nine. All right. So you got, you got boatloads of time. You're going to find that there's going to be an evolution. Yeah, um, yeah my bad. A couple of things are going to happen. You're going to see that, A, your kid, if they stay in this group uh, of their peers, You'll know, and the parents will know, if your kid is a, for lack of a better term, a starter or a scrub. And it becomes less and less of an issue. But as they are younger, I think you, you got the right approach. I would just caution you to make sure that you are um, openly communicating with your kids so they know it's nothing against them. It's just to make sure that you know nobody picks on them or you as being a bad coach. That is a... Uh, that is a what you just said, communication. The other thing is what they were talking about previously with Kyle uh, and... Uh, with regard to what was the topic that you were talking about? I just drew a blank on. <laughs> I I got to tell you, we talked about a couple of things with Kyle. <laughs> um, I, I just got interrupted with my kid. See, that's when, why these kids they drive you nuts. If, if if your child knows the difference between coach and dad, yeah, that's what I really want. You know, when I do coach on my way to a game or a practice, whether it's a five minute little chat in the car, coach. I, I remind my kid, or I remind my son, when we get on the field and we shut the car door, you know, dad is always dad for you. Mm -hmm. 
But when we get on the field, it's got to be fair. It's got to be fair, and you got to understand the difference. That if I correct you, or if I single you out, you're just like every other player. So I, I find that when I talk to my son on the way to a practice in a game, Coach Tony, sometimes that works because it's fresh right before a game, right before practice. Yeah, and as long as you're not talking about, hey, here's what I want you to do when you're at bat, I think that is a, a, a great a great thing to do. And you know what? It, it, as long as the communication is there, we are, we are in great shape. So uh, that's a terrific uh, terrific call, Mark, and, and thanks for the opportunity. We have a couple of calls lined up, but we have to go to a quick break here, folks. Uh, stick around. Um, you know what? We'll be right back. Let's go to break.